speed roll. It's all capitalized. When you see it written down on a piece of paper, it's like someone's yelling at you. That's how they stylize it. What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Joanna here, founder and CEO of Subwell. And today we are looking at two of the most popular speed day and race day options on the market. And that is the heavy hitters from the Endorphin series. We have the Speed 3 and the Pro 3. Let's get into it. So the Saucony Endorphin series was first released a few years ago and it was Saucony's attempt to climb back to relevance in the performance running shoe game. The first two iterations of the Speed and the Pro saw them sitting pretty closely together. The Speed had that nylon plate, the Pro had that carbon plate, but both had a firmer, snappy feel and there wasn't too much differentiation between the two. Fast forward to 2022 and we saw Saucony's product designers drive a little bit more of a wedge between these. They softened up the feel of the Speed they widened the base and they gave it this winged plate for stability. Well, they really catapulted the Pro into the upper echelon of top tier racers by reformulating the Power Run PB and completely revamping the upper, the ride, and the architecture of the entire Pro platform. In terms of what makes an endorphin an endorphin, that's going to be the speed roll geometry that we see in these. And so speed roll, it's all capitalized when you see it written down on a piece of paper, it's like someone's yelling at you, that's how they stylize. It. Speed roll is Saucony's trademarked marketing terminology for the rocker we see up front here. So you can see the forefoot of here, this swoops up, the forefoot of this one swoops up. Both of these are rockered platforms. What that rocker does is it makes the transition from landing on your heel or your midfoot a lot easier to ease into that toe off and get into your next step. So when you land, instead of having to do the work yourself, of pushing off the toe area, the platform rolls you gently forward and helps make the work of running a bit easier. Right, so in terms of the midsole foam, we got the same exact midsole compound in here. It's Power Run PB, which is Saucony's Piba based super foam. It's beaded, so you'll see as I bring this up close to the camera here, you can see these tiny little beads expanded that make up the texture of the Power Run PB that we see in here. Power Run PB in both of these is gonna give you a soft, bouncy, cushion, responsive ride. Uh, the main difference, and we'll get into that in a second, is how the plate interacts with that Power Run PB foam. The nylon plate in the Speed 3 that I'm holding here, it gives the platform a touch of stability and structure, but it's not gonna give you a whole lot of pop or bounce. The fast profile of the Speed is gonna come from the foam itself and from from the speed roll rocker up in the front. I can't feel the plate when I'm running in this and at some paces it feels a touch soft for my liking. So for some context I'm about a 120 to 125 half marathon runner so that means for my interval days, for my speed days, I'm running in the five and change minute mile pace. And I'm also 6'2", 165 pounds so I can put out a lot of power when I run. And this feels a bit soft for what I like. The Pro 3, on the other hand, is the perfect blend of soft, responsive, and rigid for my tastes. The carbon fiber plate interacts with the foam in this thing beautifully, and it allows me to have a comfortable ride at the slower paces. For example, the common use case of this thing for me is my 16 mile long runs. So I'll do a four mile warm up, six mile cool down, and I'll do some pace in between there, usually six miles of marathon race pace or faster. And the Pro 3 handles that beautifully because it has a bit of a wider base than some other shoe, super shoes like the Nike Vaporfly. And with the speed roll geometry, it works really well at slower speeds as well as faster speeds. And it handles the transitions between the two with ease. So now we can see that the fit of these two is pretty similar. The difference is in the material here. The Speed 3 has a stretchy knit upper, whereas the Pro 3 has more of a basketball jersey rigid structured upper. Uh, and it also has this iridescent material that's woven through the mesh. The laces of the Speed 3 are a bit softer and stretchier, whereas the factory laces on the Pro 3 are a bit firmer and scratchier. I don't get any lace bite with the Speed 3. The Pro 3 is pretty comfortable as well, but if you're really cinching down those laces on race day, you might get some lace bite, but I tend to have a bit of a, a looser 
fit with my racing shoes. I don't cinch them down as tight as possible. Around the back here, we'll see that the Speed 3 has a bit more structure and padding, though not much. You can see as I attempt to squish this in, not a whole lot is going on, versus the Pro 3, it will completely collapse in the heel. The, the Speed 3 has this plastic reflective component here, so it's not gonna give me that vertical push, but it will let me collapse it a little bit side to side, but the Pro 3 completely goes down. In terms of the looks, these share the same design language. If you were to give an untrained eye a pair of these in a similar colorway, they probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It's really, really similar between the two. Uh, but the Pro 3 is a bit cleaner. There's a few less design flares going on with the Pro 3, which I love. I love their use of simplicity with this model. Whereas the Speed 3 has a few more flourishes. You can also see that this winglet plate is on the side here. That's the black piece we're seeing and through the back there's some reflective components and a bit more design going on than we see in the Pro 3. Alright, now if we go down to the outsole, this is kind of interesting because what we typically will see is that race day shoes will have a lot less surface area covered, but that is not the case here. The Pro 3 has more surface area in the forefoot and in the rear covered with this XT900 rubber. The Speed 3 has less surface area covered, but it's a bit thicker. So the way that they're accomplishing the weight savings on the Pro 3 is by having a thinner layer of that XT900 rubber, but they're applying it uh, more generously to give you enough traction for all types of conditions on race day. On the bottom here, we can also see the carbon fiber plate through the middle and we can see carbon fiber plate up top here. It says speed roll technology on this piece of XT900 rubber in the middle of the Speed 3. It also says speed roll technology. So the Speed 3 that I'm holding here has about 280 miles on it. And you can see I've already chewed through this XT900 rubber and we're starting to eat away at the foam. I am going to beat the drum on this again. Saucony and other shoe companies, this is not okay. Our shoes need to last more than 300 miles for average runners, okay? Guys, start putting some more development behind your rubber. I know it's not sexy to be having durable shoes, but we will come back to you if you give us products that work. And right now, this is not working for me. I need to have a pair of shoes last longer than 300 miles with this rubber. Come, come on guys, do better. Same thing going on here with the Pro 3. This one is about 200 miles and we're seeing them starting to, to almost wear entirely through this patch of rubber. I think it's probably gonna go between 200 and 250 miles if I had to guess. But other than that, the foam itself is in great shape. Uh, and if we look down at the sides here, I'm not seeing a ton of squish. I do think this Power Run PB foam itself is a bit more resilient than something like a Nike Zoom X, but with the XT900 rubber, you're gonna wear it through that at 300 miles without a doubt. In terms of how I use these, the Speed 3 I'll pull for for those daily training run days where I wanna run a little bit faster, maybe I have some strides in there, maybe I wanna do a progression run, but I'm not gonna use it on my fastest interval days, on my track days. For those, I'll pull for something like Takumi Sen. The Pro 3, I'll pull for on race days. This is what I raced my first marathon in, and I'll also use this for my long runs where I have marathon race pace or any other type of race pace. Now, who do I recommend these for? So the Speed 3 is a pretty good versatile option for beginner runners who have a daily trainer and want something that can handle faster efforts. Maybe you're doing your first training block and you want something that you can train in and race in, this would be a great option. I wouldn't advise running in this every day just because it kind of does the work of running for you. And for me personally, I like running in a daily trainer with a bit of a firmer feel sometimes, like the Saucony Shift 3 or the Audi Zero SL or the Tracksmith Elliott Runner, to give my legs a chance to work some of those muscles that don't get worked when you're in a super bouncy and rockered platform like the Endorphin Speed 3 has here. The Pro 3 you can pick up as either your first carbon plated racer or as another good option in your collection. I am personally enjoying the Vaporfly a bit more for racing right now than the Pro 3, but they're pretty close neck and neck. It's really just 
what worked for me the best during that training block, what gave me that little sprinkle of magic dust, I'll pull for that. On race day, ran my last half in the Vaporfly and did well, so probably ride the hot hand for now. But Pro 3 has a place as that long run shoe, as that shoe that's reliable, comfortable, and fast. All right guys, so there you have it. That's the comparison of the Speed 3 and the Pro 3. Let me know in the comments if you've tried either of these, what you think. Also let me know what other comparison videos you wanna see me do. I've planned to do the Pro 3 and the Vaporfly 3 pretty soon. Let me know if there's other super shoes that you want me to take a look at. And thank you for following, liking. I'll make sure to keep you up to date on all the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.